Hello, my name is Sergio Andres with Elegance Found, and I'm excited today to uh, do a book review on Marela Agnelli's um, autobiography that she did uh, with her niece, uh, Marela Caracciola Chia. Um, it's called Marela Agnelli, The Last Swan. And um, I'm so amazed by this. Having Marela Agnelli's personal perspective, she was one of the true tastemakers of the 1950s jet set community. Uh, her and her husband Gianni were representatives of Italy in that scene. In many cases, they defined it. They changed fashion uh, with their taste and the way that they lived. And it's a really special thing to have an autobiography by someone so important in that movement um, and to be able to learn from it today. Um, one of the things that was important for Marela in her life were the, um, the homes and the gardens that she lived in. Um, so she actually, as part of the story, her and her uh, niece tell the story, her story, through those different projects. And she collaborated with some of the most amazing architects, interior designers um, of the 20th century. So it's a really amazing way to see kind of how um, she evolved as a tastemaker and to hear her personal reflections of each of these projects with those really important designers. Um, I want to jump right into some of my favorite parts of this autobiography and some of the ones that I think are more important were really kind of shocked me and were really just amazing to learn. And the first one was actually um, about the Breda apartment in Milan, which she did in 1969 with a friend who was an artist named Gae Aulenti. And there was this idea that the Agnellis had that every decade they would build a space to house their contemporary works from that decade. In this case, the 1960s. It was also their pied -a terre in Milan. Uh, Gianni was the uh, chairman of Fiat, the Italian automotive maker. And he that's where all the financing was done for Italy. And he needed a, a presence there. And as you can see, um, Guy created an entire world to house that contemporary art. You see some Lalanne sheep here. You see Kenneth Nolan's Bellix here. Um, you know, she did really innovative things. You see here reflections. Those were because they used a lacquer. Lighting was very important for lighting each of these pieces of contemporary art. So you have these spherical spotlight domes that I'm pretty sure she invented, which are just um, absolutely incredible. Um, but what I want to focus your eyes on is this table. And this table looks like a piece of contemporary art as well, but it actually sprung forth from the imagination of Gianni Agnelli. Um, he was the one that loved contemporary art. He brought it into this space. Um, uh, Marela is telling the story. And the artist, Gaia Alenti, who was a friend, was taken by Gianni Agnelli to the factories um, of Fiat. And he said... I want to put one of these tables in the Milan apartment. And this is not contemporary art. This is a table used by mechanical engineers in the Fiat factory. Um, and it, it's an industrial design. And it didn't start off in these colors. They actually painted it those colors to match this absolutely extraordinary piece by Roy Lichtenstein called In the Car, painted in 1963. And they they chose this yellow, they chose this blue. And what I think is so amazing about this, and I think is just possibly an inception moment, is that the bold geometries here, the primary colors, which were done by Gianni Agnelli to complement a painting in his contemporary art collection, might have been an inception point for one of the great design movements of the 1980s, which was also founded in 1981. This was 1969. In 1981, Ettore Sostas uh, founded the Memphis design movement, which we know because of its impact on the 1980s. And it's these primary colors and bold geometries. And I'd like to think that just coming out of this mind of Gianni Agnelli, who was furthering taste with the way that he lived life and the way that he collected art, and his, his putting, you know, this table as a piece of contemporary art and then the painting and the bold geometries might have 
helped inspire Ettore Sotstas in the same city a decade later for his very important Memphis design movement. So I think that's amazing. There's another inception point that I think I want that I want to talk to you about as well, which is actually all about Marela Agnelli. So another building that she talks about is the Via Frescot in Torino, in Turin. And this was a private hideaway a little bit outside of the city. And it was her first collaboration with one of um, my favorite interior designers, one of the most important interior designers of the 20th century, Renzo Mongiardino. And Renzo Mongiardino had a tremendous reverence for history and he also had an incredible craft team. And this was Marela was collaborating with him. And one of the ways that she collaborated with him was with her passion for fabric design and textiles. And through Renzo Mongiardino, they actually collaborated and were able to print these fabrics in mills that he had relationships with. Um, and to do that, she did it in a very similar way to the way that Mongiardino would have done it, which is to study 18th and 19th century Piedmontese designs and come up with new modern versions on it that are also timeless. This is a piece that I love. This is a combination of two fabrics here. This, this monkey um, is absolutely, this misends um, about mid 18th century monkeys, absolutely incredible. Um, and you see it, uh, one of the Menzo Ginar's, Mondradino's trademarks is actually these fabric lined um, rooms. You also see them in a famous photo of Lee Radswell. Um, and you see some of the porcelain uh, that was also in some of her previous apartments. But what actually happened is that after they built the house, one of her friends, who's also a famous design, designer and decorator, Federico Forquet, um, brought a man named Gustav uh, Sumsteg, who was a Zurich, Switzerland-based fabric industrialist and pattern maker, to visit Via Frescot. And he showed up, and he, 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 the first thing that he noticed were Marela's fabric prints. And he said, where are, do these come from? Where do these fabrics come from? And she said, of course, they're mine. And he said, I know they're yours, but where did you buy them? And he, this man, who was a fabric industrialist, couldn't believe that Marela had made them specifically for the house. And the next thing she knew, she was on a plane to Zurich and about to embark on a career in fabric design. And for her, designing fabric is an ancient craft that links both art and architecture. And bringing warmth into people's homes really made a big difference for Marela. And Marela was in a very... Um, a refined strata, a very um, high strata of society. And it was really important for her to find a connection with um, the rest of the world. And she did this through this design. She says, wealth can make one feel isolated. And so creating this line of fabric and working hard to make it successful made her feel connected. And I love that. And she ended up starting in 1973, designing fabrics for the Swiss firm Abraham Zumsteg. And she later on did collaborations with Ratti and Como, Steiner in Paris, and Martex and Marshall and Fields in the United States. Uh, just amazing that she was able to do that. As she furthered her fabric career, she still used the same rules. You know, reverence for history, studying historical designs, making modern versions that um, are timeless elegance, which I love. And the last thing that I learned in this book was actually about um, an apartment that there's been a lot of talk about. And it was one of Renzo Mongiardino's uh, later works. It was the second uh, New York City apartment of the Agnelli's. This was on 770 Park Avenue in a building built in the 1920s by Rosario Candela, an Italian-American architect. And this particular piece, this particular project um, is a challenge for uh, design historians because it was actually... Um, a, a period in time when Renzo Mongiardino was not traveling very much. So he was based in Italy. But Marela and him agreed that there needed to have another architect collaborating with this project on, to finish it up and for the execution. So with Marela, Renzo Mongiardino designed the three primary rooms on the first floor, the living room, the dining room, and the library interior, and the library. And But the architect 
um, that they that Marela chose was a relatively unknown, young, but brilliant designer named Peter Marino, which you might also know about because he is responsible for the design of um, many luxury boutiques, including those of Dior, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton. And he was the one that actually executed this apartment. And it was really great to be able to have from Marela Agnelli's own voice, that relationship between the two. And she really celebrates Peter Marino. And this is Renzo Mongiardino, one of the great interior designers of the 20th century, with a very young Peter Marino that continues to do incredible work today. And for me, understanding the relationship of those two in this particular house, which is all in this particular apartment, um, uh, was just absolutely amazing. There are some really amazing views. I'm pretty sure that this is exactly Peter Marino's design, his decisions to put this painting here, uh, this console. Um, you know, he did the bedrooms. He did, was responsible for the entire second floor, everything besides the thing. But because he was the architect there on hand, he was the one responsible for the execution as well. So all of the little details were also done by him. Um, so that's what I loved about uh, Marela Agnelli's uh, and what I learned from her autobiography, The Last Swan with her niece. And this is a relatively easy book to get um, a necessity for anybody that's interested in the history of design, interested in the history of the Cafe Society and that world where we were really pushing beauty forward. Uh, it was a New York Times bestseller. So it's relatively easy to get. Um, so I recommend it. My name is Sergio Andres with Elegance Found. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day.